right, hello everyone, and welcome to my presentation on the runtime system in ZO 2.0. I'm going to first talk about what a runtime system is, because if you've never poked into the guts of Zio, you may not even know what that term refers to. So I want to introduce what a runtime system is really briefly, and then talk about some of the improvements that I've made to the runtime system in Zio 2.0. And then finally, I want to end on future work. What are the things that I want to get in 2.0 that I've not already done? All the stuff I plan to do. What is a runtime system? Well. Whenever you write Zio code like this, so you create a effect that is constructed from Zio's constructor plus flat map and a combinator called eventually, what happens behind the scenes is all of these methods call other methods that call other methods that end up building this sort of blueprint. It's a concurrent blueprint that describes the execution of this Zio effect. And in this concurrent blueprint, we have the following series of instructions, which are expressed sequentially. We call the database API. And then we do something else. That's the flat map. Then we save the result in the cache. That's the thing we do after the first thing. And then finally, we repeat. If uh, any of these steps fail, we repeat starting from step number one. That's the concurrent blueprint that is described by that Zio effect value. Now, the Zio effect value is actually a tree. It is actually modeled with all these different data structures that describe the operations inside that concurrent blueprint. So the preceding effect I showed you actually ends up being translated to something that looks like this. There's a fold node there at the top, and inside there, there's a flat map node. And inside the flat map node, there's an effect partial node. And then there's various functions that are stored inside this data type. Now, this is the raw form of of Zio, all the Zio code you write, if you were to peek at its structure, it would look something like this. This is a declarative description of what a concurrent effect should do. It doesn't actually do anything though, it merely describes it. <clears throat> it's one of the biggest things to learn about functional effect systems. When you call print line or query a database or whatever, you're building a value that looks like this. It's a workflow, it's a blueprint. It doesn't actually do anything, it just describes things. And then when you call a method like unsafe run, what happens is that effect is passed to the Zio runtime system. And the Zio runtime system is in charge of stepping through all these different instructions and executing them. So you can think of the Zio runtime system as being a black box in which you feed both an environment together with a Zio effect that requires that environment and get out either an E or A. This is how you execute a concurrent blueprint. You do it with the Zio runtime system. Now I'm going to show you a, a model for the Zio runtime system that it's not actually accurate, but it is uh, useful from a pedagogical perspective. So in this model, you have a method called unsafe run. You give it the environment and the effect, and it gives you back either the E or the A. And what it does is it just loops. It has a while loop in there, and it loops until it's done. It matches against each of these terms, and it goes ahead and executes them. This is the, the means by which Zio gives you all these rich benefits around parallelism, concurrency, and resource safety, and so forth. It's because inside this while loop, it's able to do all of these other things that you would have to do manually if you were building this program in using Java Util Concurrent or straightforward procedural Scala. Zio can give you all this extreme power and strong guarantees because of the runtime system. Runtime systems have a lot of responsibilities. It's actually insane when you think about it. They have to execute every step of the blueprint. They have to handle unexpected errors, not just the expected ones, but also the unexpected ones. They are actually responsible for the concurrency that effect systems have. They have to spawn a fiber. Every time you, you call fork on an effect to spawn off a new fiber, they have to handle that. They have to cooperatively yield to other fibers so that fibers that are sort of hogging the spotlight don't get to suck up all the CPU resources. They have to make sure that the fibers split the CPUs the CPU cores among all the fibers that are working. They have to capture execution and stack traces. So they have to keep track of where you are in the progress of your own user land code. So nice detailed execution traces can be captured. They have to ensure finalizers are run appropriately at the right point in all circumstances to make sure that resources are closed, that cleanup logic is executed. This is the feature that powers Z managed and all the other resource safe constructs in Zio. 
And then of course they have to handle this messy job of dealing with asynchronous callbacks. So you don't have to deal with async code when you're doing Zio. Everything is just async out of the box. But there's a lot of smarts that go into supporting async code in a principal fashion. If this looks complicated, it's because it is. Runtime systems are astoundingly complicated. And despite the fact that these functionalist effect systems have existed for years, there's probably only 10 to 20 people in the world who could dive into the guts of one of them and work on them without any trouble. That's because they're hard to write, they're hard to understand, they're hard to make performant. The three primary challenges are correctness. How do you verify, how do you make sure that a runtime system is accurate? A single bug in the runtime system could lead to very hard to reproduce, a very surprising runtime exceptions or even correctness issues in a runtime application. And, and you might not know it. You might just see some weird behavior and think it's your own problem, but really it's the runtime system. Correctness is extraordinarily important in a, the runtime system for an effect, because if you don't get it right, then users will suffer without necessarily even knowing that you're the one to blame. Also, you have to focus a lot on performance. And this is where a lot of the challenges come from. It's not enough to be correct. It's probably reasonably straightforward to be 100% correct if you don't care about performance. But if you do care about performance, making it correct is, is harder by a factor of 10. And then maintainability. How do you maintain these systems? Over time, we add features to functional effect systems. We tweak features. We have to fix bugs, we have to tweak performance, all that stuff, how do you maintain it? So Zio's answer to correctness and maintainability is using a microkernel based architecture. Zio has what I believe is the smallest kernel for any functional effects system out there. It's not a lot of code, despite the fact that we support typed errors and environment and all these other features, it's very tiny. And Zio achieves this by um, having an interpreter whose operations are expressed in terms of Zio itself. So a lot of Zio is written in Zio. <laughs> Actually, even inside the kernel, a lot of Zio is written in Zio because Zio gives you productivity gains and benefits. It, and, and we translate higher level operators into lower level constructs using Zio itself. That enables us to keep this kernel very, very small. It's actually, I think, a thousand lines of code, roughly a thousand lines of code in Zio 2.0 branch, which is not much at all. It started out as 2000 lines of code it shrunk to 1000 lines of code. Um, and that helps us make it make sure it's correct because it's a smaller number of lines of code to audit and reason about. And it helps improve the maintainability. When we go into add a new feature, it's relatively easy because there's not 10,000 sprawling lines of code split across a dozen different files. These help give you as an end user strong guarantees about correctness and maintainability of CO. And then performance is something that we've worked on for a long time. But uh, it's something that I wanted to take to a new level in Zio 2.0. So what I have done is I have gone back to the Zio runtime system and I have systematically benchmarked and rewritten whole portions of the runtime. I've simplified everything. I've introduced new operations, deleted other operations, changed the factoring of the core Zio execution model it has actually a different set of operators in 2.0 than it does in 1.0. These are not features that you see, but they are features that result in some significant performance improvements as well as maintainability improvements. So the kernel right now is smaller than it's ever been and it's faster than it's ever been. It is the best, most highly polished version of Zio that you've ever seen. And so what I'm going to do is walk through, I'm not going to show you uh, what I did. <laughs> That's messy and it would take a lot of time that I don't have, but I will show you the end user benefits. So these are the things that you're going to notice as an end user of Zio. And in some other talk, I'll give you uh, a peek at all the stuff that I that went into making uh, Zio 2.0's run runtime system that much better than it's ever been before. Example of collection operators. So this, I'm gonna show you some benchmark results around a wide variety of different operators in, in Zio. And these are improvements that result from improving the runtime system. So you make a runtime system faster, you make everything faster. Everything just automatically gets faster. And so um, uh, the, the benchmarks I'm showing you are gonna be of higher level stuff. 
that ultimately is built onto the, the Zio core operators that the runtime system handles. But they'll give you a sense for sort of the improvements that you can expect to see. Collection operators are things like collect all, where you have a list of effects and you want to collect the results of all those effects up together in a list. And here are some benchmark results that show you the dramatic performance improvements that we're seeing between Zio and Cat's Effect 3.0 on collect all and collect all par. And we're actually not quite as fast as, um, as Cat's Effect 3 on collect all par. The other ones though were way faster, almost double the performance. And, and the collect all par issue, I'll, I'll get to that. That's to be optimized in the future. You know why that is, that's gonna be fixed. But all these came from kernel improvements. In addition, there are a huge number of operators in Zio that are region-based. What do I mean by region-based? Well, for example, when you have an effect and you make it uninterruptible, it is only uninterruptible in that region. So it can't be canceled inside that region. It can be canceled outside it. Or when you have an effect and you attach a finalizer with ensuring, so you add a finally block to your, to your try block, then that finally block is, or finally finalizer, it's associated with, with that code region and it's not associated with anything that's around it at a higher level. And also every operation you do like bracket or fine grain control of, of interruption, all these other operators, they work on regions. Region-based effects or region-based features in a functional effect system are some of the most challenging operators to implement correctly. They're just mind-bogglingly complex to get right because you have to handle all cases and all combinations of all other operators. They're very, very tricky. And it is even more tricky to make them fast. Now, fortunately, Zio has had these operators for quite some time. And so I've experimented with many different designs. I think in Zio 2.0, with the new work I've done on the runtime system, I've come up with the best, what I think is the best possible design for how to support region-based operators, which are very complex, and tricky to get right, tricky to make performant in a high performance fashion. So let me show you some of the benchmarks that I've done here. So the un uninterruptible operator takes an effect, makes it uninterruptible. Ensuring attaches a finalizer. Uninterruptible mask creates an uninterruptible region with holes in it that inherit the interruptibility status of the parent, whatever that is. And then finally, bracket is, is made for resource safety. So as you can see here, the performance of Zio 2.0's runtime system head to head with uh, CATS 3.0 it just blows it out of the water in every benchmark. In some cases, more than three times faster than the corresponding Cat's Effect 3.0 operator. What does this mean? It means that you no longer need to, even if you're writing performance critical code in Zio 2.0, you no longer necessarily need to shy away from using the heavy duty, heavyweight operators like adding finalizers or bracket for resource management or making parts of your code uninterruptible or just uninterruptible in regions, you can go ahead and go all in on that stuff because it's faster than it's ever been before. Another very important and overlooked area of functional effect system performance is interop performance. So every time you interact with the Java library, you, you often have to, from impure Java code, you have to execute a Zio effect. There's no way around that. And a common example is, let's say you have some Java code that's executing, Java library that's executing, it's going to feed you results, and you need to take those results and you need to push them onto a Zio queue. That's an interop moment. It's a moment where you need to actually do an unsafe run inside that the Java code, basically, inside the callback pass to the Java code, because it doesn't know how to execute Zio effects, so you have to execute them. And even though it's, a, it's not a big effect to execute, it has to be executed. There's no way around that. Zio has, from the earliest versions, provided you with the ability to access the Zio runtime at any point in your program. You just call Zio runtime, you get an effect that succeeds with the runtime. That runtime has unsafe run in there, which makes it very easy to do interop. However, easy is not necessarily the same as performant. And Zio has had some overhead associated with unsafe run, making interop much more costly than it needs to be. So with some optimization in Zio core that is just beginning, 
Okay, I'm going to give you intermediate results. <laughs> Optimization that's just beginning, we've been able to achieve tremendous performance improvements on interop with JVM based code. This benchmark here shows you the performance of calling unsafe run in two different scenarios in ZO2.0 versus Cats Effect 3. And what you can see here is difference in 10 times performance. That means all these places where you just have to unsafe run an effect due to interop are blazingly fast in ZO2.0. And actually, this is just a fraction of the performance that, uh, it, that I'm targeting for ZO2.0. So I actually have an optimization. There's a bug in it, so I didn't want to show you the benchmark results. But these benchmark results, assuming everything works out, could add another zero to this. So we're talking blazing fast interop. Interop that's so fast you don't even have to think about it. If you want to unsafe run something somewhere, just do it for interop reasons. And it's going to impose no performance penalties. It's going to be super fast. It opens up the door to really tight integrations between all the great JVM software out there and zeo based code at no performance penalty. And then I, I think finally, performance on iteration operators. So for each is so common. <laughs> I, I, almost all problems can be solved by 4-each and or 4-each par or 4-each par n, all the different variants there. It's critical that, that this be fast. And some of the work that we've done in the runtime system has contributed to performance increases in, in 4-each. This gives you a sense for just how fast these things are. So sort of baseline 4-each performance is phenomenal. Um, it's incredibly fast. And then when you're doing stuff in the two most, the slowest things that right now that you can do in Zio right now are forking and awaiting. And so uh, if you do those inside of four each, that's a way of measuring sort of more than just the four each. You're measuring more overhead of four each or measuring whatever work you're doing inside that loop. And uh, these have been improved and will be improved more over the life of, of Zio 2.0. So I guess this answers the question for each versus traverse. Right there, there you have the answer for each, clearly, clearly the winner. All right, future work. This is where we are today in the code that's about to go public. But where do I want to go? Well, the reason why we don't perform super well on some of the benchmarks, like you know, two to three factor improvement is, is because of the overhead of fibers. So one of the areas I'm going to be investigating is reducing fiber overhead. I already know how to do it. It's just a matter of putting in the time. That will be done before the first release candidate of, of ZO2.0. Another area I want to put a lot of emphasis into, and you can see that on the benchmarks a bit, is parallelism. Basically, reducing the overhead of parallelism is key to performing well in highly concurrent applications. And right now, all of the functional effect systems have a bit heavyweight parallelism. And in fact, and sometimes if you measure the parallelism, the parallelism might not be significantly faster than, this, than the single fiber version, and that's just because of overhead associated with parallelism. I want to ensure that that's not true for all, almost all workflows. Basically, unless you take little tiny things and try to do them in parallel, it should always be faster to do it in parallel. That requires some work. I know how to do it. I'm, I'm working on it presently. And then finally, I want to see if I can take the microkernel-based architecture of Zio and push it to the next level. It would be great. I would love it if the entire runtime system could fit in 750 or even 500 lines of code. That would help ensure correctness, for sure, help with maintainability, and also enable us to do some things that right now we, we wouldn't be able to do because we don't want to pay the cost of maintaining that code in a kernel that's already a 1,000 lines of code. So that's it. Together, I think these improvements are very significant, and they're not even over. So we're still you know, a few months out from even thinking about releasing the ZO 2.0. We're at the early stage of this work. And these early results have, have been very promising. There's additional work to do, but I'm very excited that when ZO 2.0 comes out, it will definitely represent state of the art in performance of a functional effect system that has all the expressiveness and capabilities that ZO 2.0 brings to the table.